When Dead Space first came out, I let it slip completely by me, and it was no accident. I had no interest in horror games at the time for the simple fact that they were too scary for me. Whatever great gaming experience lived underneath the scares is one that I just couldn't force myself to enjoy due to my extreme wimpiness. So now, 11 years after release, I finally played the game. And if you're wondering, I haven't gotten any less wimpy, but now I just have an awesome girlfriend who agreed to sit on the couch with me while I played. Thanks for having a stronger constitution than me, Karen. So, let's talk about how much I enjoyed Dead Space. The one thing that scared me even before I booted up Dead Space for the first time was the same thing that scares me every time I play a game more than a decade old, the feeling that I might have missed my chance. There's always a threat that some vestigial mechanics hamper the experience when jumping back generations, but nothing of the sort exists here. Dead Space is timeless, and it feels like it always will be because of the incredible sources that it chooses to derive its mechanics from. Dead Space is a game that wears a lot of its inspiration on its sleeve, and if one look at the game doesn't immediately bring to mind some other works, the word the developers certainly will. Dead Space wasn't even originally going to be Dead Space. Production designer of the game Ben Wannick confirmed in a 2017 PC Gamer interview that the project originally started out as System Shock 3. You can really feel that in game by obviously the derelict spaceship setting, but also the fact that the story primarily gets told through audio and text logs you pick up on the ground. Partway through development, the team creating the game played the then brand new but now landmark title Resident Evil 4, and they knew immediately that they needed to change gears. RE4's impact on the game is readily apparent just by looking at it, and felt even more by playing it. Both feature a tight, over-the-shoulder third-person view that makes it difficult to see your peripherals, intentionally weighty and clunky controls that force you to be deliberate with your movement, and a huge emphasis on inventory management and conservation of resources. All of these game mechanics feed into making the experience as scary as possible, and are pretty central to the survival horror experience. If you'll allow me to change mediums for a second, a third inspiration that I think can be both seen and felt is 1979's Alien by Ridley Scott. Both Alien and Dead Space open up with a distress call being sent out from a dilapidated spaceship, causing the protagonists to go investigate. Both are generally slow-paced experiences, using their scares and alien enemies in small to medium doses to maximize impact. I mean, I feel like by default any space horror game can trace some of its lineage back to Alien, but that's certainly not a bad thing because that movie rules. Dead Space picked some really excellent experiences to help influence its design, and what prevents the game from feeling like a rote copy but instead a monumental game in its own right is twofold. How well the game executes, and the fact that it has genuine innovation of its own. The creaking and disturbing setting of the mining ship USG Ishimura is tightly crafted. It's broken down into 12 different chapters, each of which takes you to a distinct wing of the ship. Most chapters open up in some sort of centralized hub room that splinters off in a few different directions. You have some flexibility in traveling into optional routes and rooms, but the critical path is generally pretty linear, and one that you will never lose sight of due to your ability to click a button and get a visual of where you need to go at any time. Notice how this visual is an action performed by protagonist Isaac himself, and something he can see on the ground, as opposed to some sort of path on a minimap or something. This leads me to what I think is one of Dead Space's absolutely coolest features, a completely diegetic user interface. There's nothing that you're looking at on screen that your character can't see. Your health and energy bars are represented by tubing on your spacesuit. Your inventory is a hologram that gets brought up before Isaac's eyes. Even ammo counters on your weapons are visualized right on the guns themselves. Aside from being really cool and freeing up a lot of screen space, this in-universe UI has the added benefit of never taking you out of the experience for even a second. This is extra important in a horror game because the more sucked in I am, the more likely I am to get spooked at all the creepy encounters the developers built. The second major innovation that Dead Space makes is to its combat. Dismemberment is the name of the game here. Though you can throw bullets into an enemy's chest all you want, that method will never be very effective. Enemies here need to be killed by hacking apart their limbs, or in some cases, their disgusting, nondescript appendages. It's a good thing that you have the perfect tools for the job. 
Given that the setting of the game is a mining facility, most of your weaponry is industrial mining equipment, meant to destroy and slice rock as opposed to getting headshots. Your default pistol equivalent weapon is a plasma cutter that shoots slicing lasers, but can be adjusted to shoot either horizontally or vertically on the fly depending on what sort of enemy you're fighting. Another one of my favorites was the Ripper, which can fire slicing razors to chop off limbs, but can also be locked in a fixed position to continuously shred whatever's in front of you. I can't stress enough how much of a big deal dismemberment is. It's not a gameplay gimmick, but a fundamental change to how you interface with every one of Dead Space's combat encounters. Most enemies can be thought of in terms of not how much health they have before they go down, but how many limbs you'll need to sever off before they finally fall. Dead Space is, of course, scary. Your alien enemies have adopted the behavior of crawling around the ventilation shafts of the Ishimura, which means that practically nowhere is safe. Creaks in the floor and thudding as enemies crawl around the cavities above you are sounds you will always be accompanied with for a majority of your journey. It's a really isolating trip. The encounters you make with friendly humans make up mere minutes of this dozen hour long game. You probably could have figured out for yourself that, yeah, this game is spooky, but regardless of how scared you get, the key is that Dead Space never loses sight of being a great video game. It's expertly paced. It never bogs itself down with out of place cutscenes or other gimmicks that take you out of the action. All of the dialogue and storytelling gets told via the aforementioned audio logs, as well as in-engine events that usually allow you to keep control of your character and only last a few seconds. Enemy design is also top-notch. More so than just having a bunch of scary-looking aliens that can be your foes, each enemy adopts a certain playstyle during the fights that must be played around. There are your traditional filler enemies that you'll be slaying the most of as you fight your way through the game, but you also have projectile shooting aliens, big tanky guys, and enemies that can revive the fallen. The encounters are structured in such a way that you will need to properly prioritize targets if you want to get on on top. Dead Space also has a really great sense of progression. All of the weapons that you gather can be upgraded using power nodes that you collect. Your choice to reinforce different equipment will likely have you favoring particular weapons over others. In my playthrough, I chose to beef up the default plasma cutter weapon to an extreme degree, giving it amazing damage and a quick reload speed. I also found nowhere near enough power nodes to upgrade even half of my arsenal, so I was forced to make some pretty challenging decisions in that regard. Decision making skills also get flexed in your inventory and resource management choices. Everything you pick up in Dead Space takes up a slot in your inventory. The ammo you acquire, your health packs, and even the weapons themselves. Inventory space is limited and, perhaps more importantly, there are no free health or ammo refueling stations anywhere within the ship. This means that your life is a tangible and real resource that you need to manage alongside every bullet you fire because refueling both of these will cost you some serious cash at the shopping terminals. It's not all combat all the time though. Dead Space has some really light environmental puzzle solving challenges that you'll face every now and then. Most of these revolve around Isaac's ability modules. With stasis, Isaac can slow down time in a particular area. This can be used to get through otherwise untraversable terrain. It also doubles as a combat ability where you can slow enemies. There's also kinesis, a gravity manipulating ability that lets you interact with specific objects in the environment. This mainly gets used to shift things out of your way, or turn on magnetic levers and switches. For the most part, I didn't mind Dead Space's puzzles. They helped break up the action and ensure that the combat never became too routine. But the very few moments of frustration I encountered with Dead Space were the ones where I kind of felt like it forgot how to be Dead Space. Case in point, this mission where you have to grab all of these radioactive orbs and throw them out of the airlock. And also this boring turret defense minigame that for some reason makes its way into the experience twice. Sections like that make up such a small minority of time spent here that I almost didn't mention them. Without a doubt, Dead Space is a tight game and wastes almost none of your time. From front to back, it fills itself with good scares, tight level design, and an innovative combat system. So, what do you get when you take System Shock, Resident Evil 4, Alien, some original combat mechanics, and shove them all into a blender? You get a really exceptional survival horror experience that any gamer should play, regardless of whether or not you're a fan of the genre. With all of its cool ideas and how well it executes on them, Dead Space cements itself as a title that is just as good and important as the legendary games that it pulls from.